welcome to this video. When it comes to the subject of how to identify whether your organic media is breaking down without removing the orchids from the pot to check the media. Lucky me, I was gifted some orchids in recent months and these have come obviously in organic media, but at some point I'm going to be switching them over to inorganic media, which is my preferred media for growing orchids. And most of the tips I'm going to refer to today actually can be applied whether you're growing in transparent pots or not. And you cannot judge what condition the media is inside the pot simply by looking around the parameters. So these pointers don't just refer to transparent pots, but also once we get our orchids in, many, many growers like to use transparent pots so they can monitor the roots and determine that way whether their media is okay. That's one way of doing it. But monitoring the roots just by looking at the pot from the outside and turning it around does not give us a good indicator of how is the media doing in the middle of the pot. So while I still have these orchids in bark, I'm going to take this opportunity and break things down as to what I looked for back in the day when I was growing in organic media. It is evident by my three examples here that the most popular choice of media when growing orchids in pots is loose, coarse fur bark sometimes with other organic media mixed in, like sphagnum moss or peat moss. And also, as with my example, the fir bark can range in many different sizes depending on how the orchid is cultivated, including what the climate environment is like, etc. But because it is organic, it will break down over time. And in order to assess how the media is holding up in the center of the pot, one would have to lift the orchid out of the pot, have a look at the media and then put it back in the pot. But we always have to factor in that orchids should not be disturbed if not absolutely necessary. And now we remove it out of the pot to see what the media is like more towards the middle. We could run into issues trying to get the roots back into the pot if we've determined that the media is in actual fact still okay. Now sometimes we do that before we purchase an orchid if we're lucky enough to be able to pick up orchids locally. But it's also frowned upon in the shops that you take an orchid out and put it back in. It's just not the the right etiquette but it does happen so to avoid any embarrassment while you're out shopping for your orchids or even within your own collection there are signs that we can look for to make a calculated decision that the media is breaking down and if it is time to repot regardless of what our notes say even if we are on a repot schedule based on notes we're going to go through my little examples here at the end of the video after I've mentioned all the pointers and the observations that I'd look for back in the day when I was growing in organic media. With any orchid, keeping an eye out for the media still being okay is a must because the media quality can change over time. Even if you buy the same brand year after year, the production, the processing, etc., that may change to save costs to the company producing, manufacturing the media, or whatever reason. For example, the natural resource itself isn't quite good enough anymore. The demand has increased and the resources cannot replenish themselves fast enough. There are so many variables that relying on stable quality from the same brand year in year out is not a safe bet. Also, your notes may be saying one thing, but climate influences may change making a need for more watering necessary. This accelerates the breakdown of media. Another point is as well, the orchid is growing really well. It needs more water, more fertilizer, and suddenly the mineral buildup that was previously not present becomes an issue because as an orchid grows, if it is in its previous pot that had the size prior to the orchid exploding in growth, so to speak, the pot is relatively small in comparison to what the orchid's activity is. We are responding to the growth explosion positively by adding fertilizer and watering more. But because of the growth explosion, the size of the pot becomes inadequate. We are watering more, but the pot is drying out much, much faster and we have fertilized more. So there is no time for the orchid to absorb all the extra additional fertilizer before the media dries out and excessive fertilizer will build up on the surface of the media. So relying on notes only and trusting that time frame 
is not a safe bet. It's good to have notes as a reference, something to fall back on, but our eyes are our best asset to stay on top of media state in the pot. So let's look at the signs we can see and make a judgment call that will ensure that we are on top of what is going on in the pot, no matter what our notes say. One observation is how long is the pot staying wet compared to previous times between watering? Looking at the roots that you can see, are they greened up longer than usual using the baseline of how your pot behaved in previous months? If so, that is a sure sign your media is breaking down and is staying wet too long. Another factor to observe just by looking at the surface of the media is if there is mineral buildup, excluding any growth explosion, excluding anything. Seeing how your pot has behaved from a couple of months ago and suddenly now you're seeing mineral buildup, even if your fertilizer level hasn't increased and you are flushing regularly, and there it is, white deposits on the surface once your pot dries out. That means your media is breaking down because if none of your other variables have changed then your fertilizer is not being absorbed anymore because the media is turning acidic. This is because the acidic media is locking out the nutrients and that results in your orchid not being able to absorb the nutrients. So they will just settle and linger in the pot becoming visible once the media dries out. And when I say no other variables have changed in this example of mineral building up on the surface of your media that includes your pH levels are on point what you put into the pot has not changed and suddenly still you're getting mineral buildup media breaking down will cause salt buildup to appear at the surface of your media because the pH in the pot has dropped to such a degree that the orchid isn't absorbing any of those nutrients a sure sign that the media is breaking down now you could also see something like a white appearance on the surface of your pot that would make you think that you have got salt deposits. That is not to be confused with the media bleaching from the sun. It takes a lot of time for that to happen the fading of surface media in a pot. And that little phrase, it takes a lot of time for that to actually happen, also is a sure sign that the media inside the pot is breaking down because if you've had an orchid exposed to the sun and the bark is starting to fade and bleach out a little bit, that orchid has been in that pot a very, very long time and it's time to repot and refresh the media. Excessive algae, of course. The key word being excessive. So what we would see on the outside of a pot cannot be interpreted as excessive, even if you were not to see the roots through the transparent pot. Excessive would be green liquid coming out of the bottom holes of the pot. Not a lot, but enough to feel damp. It doesn't have to be a pouring green liquid, just a certain icky, slimy dampness. That is a sign that the algae has penetrated deep into the pot and suffocated itself out and is now dying in there. Now I have a whole video just talking about algae. The link of that is in the description. So I'm not going to delve into further details on that, but the slight bit of liquid is a warning. It doesn't have to be a lot. When you lift up a pot and you touch the bottom and your fingers come off with something green that is a little bit slimy, a little bit sludgy, that is what I'm talking about. It's just a little bit of a warning that something is going on inside the pot that you cannot see. Your roots are not necessarily dead. Orchid roots are able to survive excess algae in the pot longer than we may think, but that decayed algae will accelerate the breakdown of the media and then a domino effect takes place. The pot climate will turn acidic, which is not ideal for roots long term. Another sure sign that your bark is breaking down, and this requires another of our senses, not just our eyes, but this is very closely connected to our eyes, and that is our nose. Broken down media in extreme cases will have a pungent, rotting smell. If there is a single whiff of anything rotting, as in vegetative rotting, and not your blooming bulbophyllum, <laughs> we're talking vegetative rotting, it is high noon for a repot. No matter what our notes say, something has gone wrong down the line and the presence of bad odor signals it is time for an immediate intervention and a repot has to be dealt with straight away or as soon as possible. If life is getting in the way and you cannot address a pot that has a pungent rotting odor to it, 
Flush as much as you possibly can. At a first sign of that odor, the cleanest water you have, and just pour water through that pot as much as you possibly can and repeat that in several stages until you get time to repot. At least you are cleaning out what is going on in the pot with the decaying algae by pouring as much water through the pot as possible. Easy when it comes to bark, even seedling size bark. Harder to do with a pot that has sphagnum moss in it because the decaying and dying algae that's suffocating itself out in that pot with sphagnum moss has nowhere to go. So it's not a one rule fits all media, but with bark and the sludge, you can flush, flush, flush. You're buying yourself some time without having to repot. Should you have that odor and your orchid is in sphagnum moss, there is no buying time. A repot has to be done without delay. Now, in some cases, some orchids, some genus, we can say the media is breaking down because we can see blotches and blemishes on the foliage of the orchids. Those are genus specific. As far as I can say at my end, I do not grow them. There are Mazdevalias, there's Draculas. Also, for example, Zygopetalum, we can say if the media is breaking down, if the leaves have blotches and blemishes on them, it could be a possible issue with organic media breaking down in the pot. There are so many variables when it comes to blotches on leaves, it doesn't necessarily guarantee that it is a result of broken down media. So I'm very hesitant to put that information as what we can visually define and determine. But because of the fact that that does happen to some orchids, I'm adding this information in with this video. And the reason I say that as well is that a lot of humidity, lack of humidity, lack of airflow, too much airflow also factor in when it comes comes to spotting and blotches on the foliage. Media breakdown being one of them, but not the only reason. So you see, there are a lot of signs out there that we can observe without disturbing the roots. We just have to be vigilant, and that just ensures that the orchid is going to be fine. It can also buy us some time, even if our notes say we need to repot now. If climatic changes have interfered in the past and there wasn't as much watering, or the orchid didn't grow as anticipated, we can probably extend the lifeline of the pot and the media for another six months, maybe a whole year, which is also always a good thing because we're actually saving ourselves some resources. <laughs> So what I mentioned here today does not mean a regular repot according to notes is not best practice. But if life gets in the way and we are unable to follow our repotting to a T, then we can also really use these visuals to our advantage. Imagine another container ship getting stuck in the Suez Canal and your orchid media is on that container ship and it takes three months to get your orchid media. Having these visual pointers in the back of your mind can give you peace of mind. So let's have a look at my little examples here based on what I've just mentioned. Here is my Renanthra caloptera. We talk about algae, and there is algae from what we can see outside the perimeter of the pot, seeing as it's transparent. This is not something I would repot into my media at this point in time if I wasn't going to put it into inorganic media. I can't see any problems because of algae. And if I were growing in organic media, I wouldn't address this pot at all the orchid seems to be doing pretty, pretty well. And now we look at the surface of the pot. Huh, here we see the white deposits I was talking about. And we're like, okay, inside it's okay. The algae isn't bothering me. What's this white stuff? This white stuff is one of two things. Surface watering, watering from the top because it came from a nursery, is probably going to affect the evaporation too watering ratio and the salt buildup will be much faster in my climate because I have a very dry climate whereas in the nursery there was a lot more humidity so the salt buildup wasn't that evident or it could be absorbed before it actually accumulated. So I've got some mineral buildup on the surface here and it is also possible that in this case some of the bark looks a little bit faded. That means as previously mentioned that it is time for a repot because for bark to fade, that is a long, long time. If I didn't want to repot, I would just remove the bark from the surface that I can remove and still buy myself more time. So you see, even salt buildup on the surface of your organic media does not necessarily mean that you need to go in straight away and repot the entire orchid. You can just take away what is on the surface 
and if you want to, refresh with proper media. If the rest of the pot is absolutely fine, and this one is, I wouldn't repot this. Now, if these were to be mushrooms, fungi, whatever, same thing would apply. I can go in with hydrogen peroxide and get rid of that fungus or the mold or whatever. If the rest of the pot isn't going acidic and nothing else is going on, that mold is easily dealt with while the orchid is still in the pot. And then it's just a flush after a flush after a flush to eliminate the dead material that resulted from that hydrogen peroxide treatment. So let's look at my Cattleya hernae. We have seedling bark here. Not exactly appropriate media for the culture of this orchid, but you know what, we'll take it. At least the size of the bark is correct. We've got fine roots. And it, this is more like a medium size but seedling kind of bark. But what is going on here? The algae situation is fine. There is some in there, I'm not bothered. I would not repot this orchid at this point in time if I wasn't going into my inorganic media. My concern, however, is that it is quite warm here. It's been extremely windy as well, and this orchid just hasn't dried out. In about three to four days, she's not drying out. So there is something going on in the pot. It could be there's more sphagnum moss in this pot that I cannot see, but it is because the roots are not drying out. That is why this orchid would need a repot even if I were to pot it back up into organic media. Now, ideally, we want to wait for new roots to start all the time, every time. That is best practice. So luckily, I have a new growth coming here, which will provide me with new roots very, very soon meaning I can address this pot straight away and I don't have to worry about losing any viable roots at this point in time because this new growth and what I can see back here is going to be the future root system for whatever media of choice I have in mind for this orchid. So yeah, in this case here, this qualifies as an immediate repot being necessary. The media is breaking down. Now, an orchid busting out of the pot is not a reason or an immediate repot requirement. That is definitely not the case. Some orchids are notorious for liking it very tightly packed around their roots. So, a bulging pot is a great sign that there is a root system that is healthy and functioning in there. And that is not a signal that we would need to go in and repot. We can't see anything that's going on in here. Got roots growing out of the base. They are greening up. Everything seems to be okay. Algae-wise, clueless. We have no idea because at the surface, well, we see a little bit of moss, but it's not a big deal. Here is something where, how long is the media staying wet? That would be the best observation to understand if this orchid needs an immediate repot or can we wait for a new growth. And in this case, I can assure you this orchid does not need an immediate repot. We have plenty of time. The bark is chunky. It is of great quality. And we don't have any salt buildup either. Perfect. And this orchid has been with me since September 21. And I still have it in its original nursery container, in its original bark. So you see, these observations are super, super handy to keep in mind. They give us peace of mind, and they also allow us to be able to extend the time period of receiving an orchid new into the collection and letting it acclimate to our environment without feeling a sense of urgency. I personally want to get my hands into every single pot the moment it arrives into my collection, but I have stopped doing that because more often than not, it was a much, much bigger headache for the orchid long term than it was just to leave her be. In the case of, for example, media staying wet too long, the only thing I can recommend at that point in time is to not water it again until the pot is bone dry. Letting an orchid get over its jet lag when it comes new into our collection is a very, very important detail that shouldn't be ignored if at all possible. So watching your media, watching what the pot is doing, whether your orchid has been in your collection for years and years, whether you're taking notes and you have them on a regular repot schedule, the guarantee of just observing your media and making sure that maybe you can buy yourself some time and feel a little bit more relaxed about your repots. These pointers I just shared with you were the ones that I was going by when I was growing in organic media back in the day. 
And I hope that this is helpful for you as well, long term, short term, and you don't have to go fussing around the root system prematurely. And you don't run into a situation where your media has broken down way before your notes told you to repot and then you've got an orchid that is set back and possibly a failed root system. I appreciate your time watching this video. Thank you so very, very much. I wish you a very beautiful day on one condition though, that you please stay safe. Take care. Bye.